There you go. I didn't have to say it. So again, I just want to welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us for your lunch time. Uh, I really appreciate it on behalf of BBB. Uh, first of all, as, as Missy uh, introduced earlier, uh, we are no different than you. What we want to do is be there for our customers and be there for each other in the business community. And uh, so we're trying to attempting to identify ways to support our small business community. And this is one of our efforts. And thank you all for being here. So I'd simply like to introduce our presenter today, Misty Burmeister. Um, I have to tell you that I uh, Misty uh, was referred to me by a uh, BBB Foundation board member. It's a foundation board member that uh, the BBB staff and I have come to uh, love, adore, and respect tremendously as an entrepreneur. And uh, so we were uh, given this connection. I tapped into a few of Misty's uh, TED Talk, a few of her videos, and went, wow, um, this woman got me through a day. And I, I have to tell you, a day that I needed something, Misty introduced to me a concept that she said, Angie, what I hear from you as a business leader, a business owner right now is decision fatigue. You are experiencing decision fatigue. And I went, oh my gosh, that is so what was happening to me the first few weeks of this virus and its impact um, on us locally was beginning to feel like I could, I was my brain was tired and how silly and lame that sounded, but she really gave me some tools to help me um, in leadership moment of crisis to feel better. Uh, and not just Misty's check-in, but also Misty's uh, saying, what's this video? Listen to these words, but helping me and sort of a coach mentor uh, and, a, and ways to help. So I wanted to give Misty the opportunity to impart these things to you. Misty is a best-selling author. She's an innovator and entrepreneur, TED, uh, TEDx speaker. I think that is uh, super cool. She's uh, worked with leadership teams from Hopkins to Johnson & Johnson. Uh, the EPA, the U.S. Navy. So she has worked with true leaders uh, and leadership teams that guide our country, guide our economics. So today she's going to share uh, best insight strategies, practices for communicating with courage. And God, what courage it has taken me for the last few weeks. Um, and helping us to really deepen our trust in this virtual work environment. So with no more fanfare and sure, no more conversation from me, Clay, you have my permission to mute me. As I say, welcome Misty and thank you all. I'm done. Angie, thank you so much for that warm introduction. It just I feel so good. I got to tell you, all those accolades aside, I am as much of a fish out of water as anybody on this screen right now. I'm, um, I'm paddling underneath the water too, going, how do I, what do I, where do I, ah. <laughs> so just like all the rest of you, I am uh, right there with you. I'm just gonna share with you the, the slides to get them up on the, on the screen here. And I'm gonna get them to work, because here I am. Um, here we are. So here, I, I wanna see who's here today. Now, Clay mentioned that there's a, a chat box. If you could please, on your, on your chat box, just, Put in your all in one response, your name, your location, and what type of work do you do? There we go. There we go. We got Keith and Tracy, Savannah Park. Yes, the beautiful weather out there, isn't it, guys? Everybody, I think it's going to be right around Baltimore, Director of Business Development. Jim, it's so great to see you. All right. Let a few more of these come in. Oh, wow. Chris, senior, senior care, what a, a, a challenging time for you, I'm sure, with, with, um, with the pandemic. Air conditioning, very needed right now. Andrew, uh, 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 excuse me, 
A A Angie, Andrew is um, giving you high fives and reaching out to you saying hello. So as those come in, you guys can get a chance to see who's on the on the call with us here today on the Zoom. This is not Zoom, but on the uh, the virtual place that we are right now. Let's go back and do things the way we used to do it. Jump on real quick. Uh, go, go ahead and grab yourself a pen and a piece of paper. Go, we're going old school today. Make sure you have a chance to get <clears throat> any notes that you want to grab. And uh, Larry, I see you. It's nice to see you here, Missy. Uh, Merit Properties. Go ahead and grab yourself a pen and piece of paper. You might grab some ideas here from this conversation. I just find it easier than trying to get on a computer screen. It's just easier to take a note, just, you know, a little pen and paper. It works really great. All right. So let's talk about what the unusual problem is right now. I don't know if you guys have a similar experience right now, but this is um, sort of the idea of leading in a virtual environment is one thing. Leading in a virtual environment with this level of stress, fear, and grief is something entirely different. And it's not something that's just going to go away overnight. <clears throat> in fact, as somebody already said, this is sort of a, a new normal, and the new normal isn't even normalized yet. We're not even there. This, there's going to be consistent change that's happening. We're going to talk a lot more about that as we go along, but just wanted to point right at what is the unusual problem that people are struggling with, that we're all struggling with right now, to be able to name it. You're going to hear me talk a little bit about Brene Brown's work. She's a shame researcher. If you've not heard her TED Talk, make sure to take note of that. You're going to want to see that tremendous uh, woman with a lot of resources that are very beneficial. At the end of the of our um, time together, I'm going to put up a resource page so you can get easy access to all of it. So just really clear, you know, the, the, the problem that we're dealing with right now isn't just that we're virtual, it's that we're virtual and we're dealing with unprecedented grief, loss, uh, fear, uh, lots of challenges, not just within ourselves, but also within our teams and certainly within our customers. I heard that concept the customer base um, mentioned already and clay when i when he and i were talking before we even got on to this um to, to this session that we're here on today um we, we went over some of the specific challenges that you guys noted and what i kept hearing was having to do with how do i how do I continue to build relationships with my customers during this time? We are going to touch on that a little bit. I'll go back and forth. Uh, but most of this presentation is really geared toward leading, leading your team and, of course, also leading your customers. We can only ever do that when we lead ourselves. And so what um, and I'm going to be everything I'm going to be sharing. I practice. So I'm a, a student of this work as much as I am a, a, share, a teacher of this work. Um, and so let's go ahead and move forward here. So I'm gonna ask the question, why bother even talking about dealing with work, you know, creating trust in a virtual environment? Please, if you'll just put up some, some, um, some, some comments in the, ch in the chat box on this, why is this in even an important concept to talk about right now? And of course, if anybody has any thoughts they'd like to um, like to be able to speak up and share, by all means, speak up and share it. So some of the reasons why is because, frankly, like this is the direction that we're going anyway. So even as the pandemic shifts and we find some solutions to allow for us to be in person again, the 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 big um, shift toward being online it's here to stay. So this is the way that we're doing it. So how do we build trust? Virtually is, is is critical during this time. Amy, I see you talking about trust. We all need to be able to create trust, whether we're in a in person, but especially right now. Missy, I see you in a virtual environment. You can't use body language and tone of voice to help you share your intent. Well, you can a little bit. I'm gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about that. It's so important. Like, how do you use, you know, your body language? How do you use your tone of voice? to communicate your intentions. Things will change forever, Jim. It's so it's true, things have already changed forever. And we need to change the way that we do business. Now somebody I was speaking with not too long ago said um, literally these words, I've been doing it this way for 30 years. And this is um, a vice president of HR. 
um, I've been doing it this way for 30 years. And she was, I'm not, I, this is the way I do it. And I just virtually hugged her because I feel the same way. And yet, like we have to change the way that we're doing things. Uh, another um, uh, executive that I spoke with recently um, shared with me, he goes, I never talk about any of these things during meetings. I'm not about to start talking about them now. So clearly times have changed and we have to shift with it. We can sort of either go with the flow of the river and just kind of bounce off of rocks or else we can really get caught up in the turbulence of getting hit harder by resisting it. And so I, I, you guys would not be on this, uh, I don't know if we call this a call on this. I'm so used to saying Zoom session now. And this is clearly not a Zoom session. On this webinar, if you were not interested in, in figuring out how to pivot and how to adjust uh, right now. Angie, I love that you wrote in a remote environment, building trust with our employees is critical. I couldn't agree more. So all very good reasons to bother with this. So what are we going from and what so what are the different levels of leading virtually and how how do we take it from this sort of bottom of it's exhausting and move up the change. Maybe I don't know where you are in this, but ultimately my goal for our conversation today is to allow for this ex, uh, this experience that we're collectively in together to lead uh, to, to be great for growth inside of us and certainly inside of our teams, our organizations, our families, uh, shoot for our cats and dogs as well, right? So this is this is where I want to lead right into, I'm going to turn this off for just a moment. I'm playing with this technology and while I play with this technology, I'll say to you guys so I can see your faces. I want to be able to see your faces, so I'll go back and forth. Um, before I even lead into any more, I just mentioned technology and the newness of it. Brene Brown talks a lot about how challenging going, having a first time is. I don't know about you guys, but I, I do not like being new at something. I want to already know whatever it is I need to know to come across in a way that's going to be the most effective, right? So she talks about, uh, she calls them FFTs. Have you guys heard of this? Raise your hand if you will. Have you heard of it? FFTs. So I'm not going to give the full... Uh, and so Brene Brown would call them freaking first times, but she'd use a different F to start with, right? So again, freaking first times and how do we do this? And her content around that helped me to go, hmm, that's what this is. I'm new to, at that time, Zoom, I'm new to this. I mean, I could just go wearing a mask in public, seeing people with masks. It's also very, very new. Leading virtually, building trust virtually, it's also new. So she talks about, the importance of naming it and then normalizing it and then doing a reality check in, in on it. So no, like naming it, what it is that I'm feeling um, and then normalizing it. It makes sense. Like everybody's struggling with this very same thing right now. And so I don't need to be perfect at it and I can play with this technology and figure it out as I go. And, uh, and so, you know, at the very beginning, Angie talked about this idea of, decision fatigue and this brings us back brings me to the next slide that i want to i'm going to just have to keep going back and forth to learning how to share the screen um so here we are so she talked a little bit about decision fatigue and it was just maybe two weeks into the pandemic that i i didn't even realize my brain was swirling going 100 miles an hour trying to figure out where to go what to do and a colleague, a friend of mine, used that same language, decision fatigue. And I went, oh, my God, that's what it is that I'm struggling with. See, being able to name it helped me a great deal. So once I was able to name it, I sat down with myself and I said, me having a meeting with myself, and my little pieces of paper. And I said, really, what is the most important thing for me to be focused on right now? And I wrote down several and I pulled out the top three and stuck them at the top of the piece of paper. And I said, what activities go around this? And I did a bunch of things around the activities related to that. And then I went into all the other areas of my life that are critical importance right now. And believe it or not, what came to the very top was being able to exercise. I'm a swimmer. I love to swim. I can't do that right now. Um, though I'm really getting close to putting my wetsuit on and like going and finding a place to just jump in the water, right? It's probably the healthiest water that we've ever seen in Baltimore right now. So I'm seriously considering that. 
if I can find a place that's allowable to jump in. The point here is that once I realized what was actually exhausting me, then I could create a plan for myself and literally decide what's the most important things for me to do every day. Now, in my situation, my wife is also working from home. She's a producer of a video game company. And so in order for our household to function in a great way, I, I just literally mirrored my schedule after hers, except for when I'm doing this with you right now, then she adjusted. But for the most part, I adjusted my schedule so that whenever she's in meetings, I'm doing my meetings during those times. So it's just some ideas for you guys to think about. So how is it, how is it that we increase some simple, these are some really simple ideas for a not so simple time on increasing trust in a virtual environment. So I wanna go into the first idea that I have here for you guys. Every, every morning, and this is gonna dive in, we're gonna start with diving into yourself because you set the foundation for everybody else. And then I'm gonna go a little bit bigger picture and give you some ideas also for your team and for your customers. We'll touch on those pieces as well. By the way, if you have questions as we're going, please put them into the, into the chat box. Clay's got this, and so he'll be able to take us right in um, into those questions. You know, before I go into check in with yourself, this is actually a really good time to share with you a story that sort of let let me off led me off with with this with this challenge. So it was two weeks in, three weeks maybe, two and a half weeks into the pandemic, and we were supposed to be staying home. And I woke up that morning with pain in my left breast and i had had it for a couple of weeks but the long story made short is i found a lump and you can imagine the level of terror that went through me at three o'clock in the morning i had had that pain for a while but i finally got the courage to do an exam and i immediately called the doctor at three o'clock in the morning and just left a voicemail said if you know if it's really that important they'll they'll see me if it's not then it's maybe it's just not that big of a deal well long story short I ended up, I went, got to the doctor immediately. She was concerned enough to send me across the street to get a mammogram. And they didn't just do one mammogram, they did two mammograms. And then they did a sonogram. And then they did another sonogram. They had two different doctors looking at the sonograms. And they said, you know, we're really not sure what this is, but you need to get a biopsy on it. Now, you guys, I went from like, this is a pandemic, I'm uncomfortable, this might be something, might not be anything, especially the first doctor. She's like, I don't think it's anything, I really don't. Just go get it checked out though. To, oh my gosh, this is, I might have cancer. Went across the, the hallway to, talk to, to set an appointment with the guy that I would ultimately get a biopsy from thinking I need to schedule this and they decided they wanted to get me in immediately fear went up even higher I mean you guys can imagine what I was feeling in that moment sheer terror so I get in they immediately put me in and I they take me back to the the surgeon's office where he's got a he's 74 years old he's got a big mask on his face and I walk into his office and the first thing he says to me is, I'm so sorry, I've got this mask on. I said, really, I'm not, I'm grateful that you have it on. You know, just trying to keep everything, you know, keep yourself safe during this time. And you know, we talked a little bit, he looked at my, my, my files. He told me, you're, you're very boring. Like I never wanted to be called boring ever in my life. I loved being called boring in that moment. He said, I really don't think there's anything wrong, but we just need to just double check. And I was like, all right, cool. So we go in, he does the surgery, which is just a little biopsy. And you can imagine how terrifying that was for me. I hadn't eaten yet, so I'm shaking. He leaves after he's done, leaves the, the operating room. And one of his team members looks at me and said, would you like a Nutrigrain bar? I'm like, yes, I'm starving. And so she comes back in, Nutri-Green bar and a little bottle of water and goes to take me, I think, to leave. And actually she takes me to the right down the hall back to the surgeon's office. And I'm like, well, this is interesting. What's happening? As soon as I walked in the door, she closed it behind me. I look up at the doctor. I'm just going to leave him nameless. Call him Dr. S. 
And real quick um, note on him, Dr. S is, can you guys just give me a thumbs up that you can hear me? I'm seeing a slow connection. Okay, great. Dr. S is um, 74 years old. He has had a cancer and he had told me at one point that if he gets this thing, he won't survive it. And so now I walk back into his office. They close the door. I look up at Dr. S. He had taken his face mask off. He's less than six feet from me. He looks down at the bar that I have in my hand. He goes, oh no, that Nutrigrain bar, that's, that won't do for you. Turns around, goes to his file cabinet, pulls it out, pulls a protein bar out and puts it on the table and says, that's more like it. Then he grabs a Mountain Dew. I will never see Mountain Dew the same ever again for the rest of my life. He pulls out a Mountain Dew, sits right across from me, not but maybe a foot or two, sits back in his chair, cracks open his Mountain Dew and says, he actually doesn't say anything. I look at him and just the, his posture and I just burst into tears. I said, Dr. S, I believe you. I really do. I don't think, I think I'm in good health. I said, but this pandemic thing has got me out of this world, like anxious. He goes, yeah, me too. He goes, I can't, I can't get, I can't sleep past three o'clock in the morning. I can't stop worrying about this. We've never seen anything like this before. It's exhausting. I'm sorry that we're having to deal with this, but we're going to get through this together. Then he hands me a business card and he says, this has my email address on it. If you need anything, know that it comes directly to me. And just as I'm getting ready to leave, I looked at him, I go, Dr. S, if I came out here and had surgery on my breast just to have this experience, it was worth it. And that's the kind of leadership that we're talking about here today. So all of these pieces I'm getting ready to toss out at you are with the idea in mind of really what this, is, what this time's about is authenticity, vulnerability, and bravery in a way that we've never experienced before. And it's, it's requiring us to step up and share ourselves in ways that we've never done before. For me to even get on a video and share this story and others that I will share with you, I have to live this exact concept. And here's how I do it. On the screen, you'll see check in with yourself. This is the first of very simple strategies to use during a very not so simple time. Every morning, check in with yourself. How am I doing? What am I feeling? Where am I right now with this whole thing? Because we're changing and we're hearing different, even if we don't intend to hear information, we're hearing it. So it's critical that you check in with yourself every day. How are you doing and, and how was yesterday and what is what is your, you know, your plan for for tomorrow? or not for tomorrow, for the day. How are you gonna work through? Just really checking in with yourself every single morning. Uh, I, I listened to a, a recording, a podcast. Brene Brown interviewed Dr. David Kessler. Now, Dr. David Kessler is a world-renowned grief expert. And she was interviewing him about the experience of this pandemic. And he said, at the time, I was honestly, I was doing yoga and I was just laying there, finishing yoga. And he's talking about the different uh, uh, phases of grief. So we have five different phases of grief. He talked about that. I'm like, OK, I know the five different um, categories or phases of grief. Got that. And he said, then he said the next little piece, it just woke me up in a pretty big way. He said, you know, there was the world before 9-11. And then there was the world after 9-11. And I could get that picture in my mind. I know you guys can too. I could get that picture in my mind like nobody's business. And I remember what life was like before 9-11 and then after. Now, at the time of listening to this, I'm on the floor and um, doing my yoga. At the time of listening to this, I had this pressure that I didn't even recognize was sitting on my chest. I didn't know what it was from, why it was there. It was just sitting there. And then he said this next little piece. He said, there was a world before this pandemic, and then there's gonna be the world after this pandemic, which of course I already kind of knew that one too. But then he started to describe some of the changes that are likely to happen. Um, when he said, handshakes, hugs, burst into tears. 
I mean, there was a level of grief that I didn't realize I was holding on to that exploded from me. And I just let it go. I let it move through me. Because you guys, if there's one thing I want to just touch base on with emotions. It's energy in motion. Emotion is energy in motion. If we, when we can just allow the, those emotions to flow through us and not stuff them down and try to be somebody that we're not, allow ourselves to be human, to be vulnerable, man, we could release it and then we're free. So when he said those words, I was like, oh my God, I was attached strongly to this idea that I would always be able to hug and, and shake hands and, and, and now that's in question. And so there was an attachment I had to that that I had to let go of. And there's a grieving process that comes with that. And I share that with you because we're all going through various levels of grief related to loss right now. And some of us are dealing with it, you know, perceivably well. Some of us don't even know what's going on inside of us. There's a whole bunch of different levels of, of ability when it comes to these kinds of challenges. We're all dealing with it at some level. So because that experience, it was just two days after listening to Brene Brown interview Dr. David Kessler that I had the experience in the hospital. That, uh, the awareness of the grief and relief, releasing it allowed me to go, hmm, this is interesting. Hmm, this is interesting. Instead of resisting, because there's a lot of newness out there right now, a lot of uncomfortableness being anywhere near the medical or hospital world it was very uncomfortable for me. But being able to name it helps significantly. I'm uncomfortable. Here's why it makes sense. Great. So the, again, the very first step that I want to offer to you guys is to check in with yourself every single morning. The next piece, any questions on that? Clay, did we get any questions on that? I'm not following the chat. You are. So um, no questions yet. Great. Awesome. The second piece here is to have a sounding board. What does that mean really in good shape to people to be able to just share whatever's on your mind? Now, it's really important here in this piece is that prepare the person that um, this is one of the greatest things that a, a leader I recently worked with said, oh, that's how you do that, right? So whoever it is that you choose, the people that you pick, set them up for success by telling them, listen, I just want to be able to express. I don't want you to fix anything. I literally just want to be able to share. And if I'm having a minute, have my minute. Like with my wife, Boy, just a couple of days ago, she said to me, I don't want you to fix my problems. I don't need you to fix them. I just want you to listen. Great reminder. So have a sounding board. Prepare them for how to be a sounding board for you. Moving right to the next one. Be a sounding board. Quick little story for you guys. Linda, this woman, Linda Ellis, who I interviewed not too long ago. Um, she has a, a company down in D.C. It's exploding, actually, right now. They're, they're, they're growing right now. But she was sharing with me one of the things that she's doing, which she's always done. So it's a part of strengthening the foundation of her company culture is all 400 of her employees have her cell phone number. And they have been instructed if they have any moment of fear, frustration, they just need to vent to just call her. And they are calling her and they're having their minutes and she listens. One of the pieces of this is to simply say, what you're saying makes sense. Just like, just like Dr. S did with me, it makes sense. I'm sorry that you're struggling with that right now. Yep, that makes sense, yeah, that's tough. And just be a sounding board for your team right now, as well as I'm gonna shift over to, as well as your customers, because a lot of, um, a lot of people right now are going, how do I maintain our customer base? If you could be a sounding board for them, man, you will far surpass anybody who's, ever served them give them a call and ask them how they're doing and then really listen and just hear them massive massive success on that um, that's just one of the ideas there we're going to come back to that in just a moment where we talk about we'll talk about some other dynamics that you can pull into conversations with customers and employees alike that will strengthen trust and um, in virtually and in person frankly so connection before content connection before content one more time connection before content now i had an opportunity i told you guys i study this at least as much as i teach it probably at least actually a lot lot more than what i teach it 
And yet I fumble with this. Just a couple of days ago, maybe three or four days ago, I called Angie, our beautiful leader who's putting this out there right now. Angie, I love you. I called her because I was struggling or because I was trying to figure out something about the content that's online and you know how to promote this event to the folks in my in my network. I was really having a minute inside about that. And I, so I called her and I'm like, just jumped right into, look, I'm looking at the website and this is what I'm seeing. And I just went a hundred miles an hour with her. And she put a massive pause on me and helped me to see the level of energy I had wasn't working for her. I couldn't have been more grateful for that. But the biggest thing that it taught me was to remember to connect before I jump into any content. I just jumped right into here's what we're doing. And I didn't, by the way, I've also, because of you, Angie, I've written this on, it says low and slow, right? I was going a million miles a minute with my voice, voice and tone. So my intention from that point forward, just bring it down a notch, just a notch. And so that I can connect first before I jump into the content. So when you're with your team or when you're with a, a customer, they want to connect more than you can imagine right now. And if you can help them do that, you'll solve some of the biggest challenges in their lives right now. Connection is so critical. Just yesterday, uh, Yvette and I, my wife, we went for a workout because it was downpouring. You guys remember it was downpouring, like massive amounts of rain were flying from the sky. But we went over to a, a, a close by, not far from where we live, there's a garage. And we just backed up because you can't get into the garage unless you have access to it. We didn't. So we just parked next to it and walked through anyway. And as we're setting up our little exercise space for the day, for the day, for, for the next 30 minutes, um, this gentleman pulls up and uh, starts talking to Yvette about her Subaru. And immediately I could sense he's just looking for connection. And, and, and what he saw was commonality. So in our moments together right now with our customers and our employees alike, commonality is what's going to create that connection. So the leaders who are right now just trying to show uh, that they have all their stuff together, they're losing a massive opportunity to build trust. I was on a call not too long ago with a leader who's literally, his, his words are like, I'm fine, I'm good, I'm thriving through this, everything is great. Yeah, I just had to fire five people but I'm good, we're gonna weather this storm. I was like, Jigga, what? <laughs> You're fine? Like, I can't connect to that. Give me something to connect to. Doesn't mean I want you to be doom and gloom, but be real with me, which is really what this surgeon was teaching from the story at the very beginning. Authenticity, vulnerability, and courage and bravery right now is at the top of a necessity in leadership, be it leading your Customers are leading your employees. Any questions on this so far? No questions, just a great comment from Amy. If there's no connection, the communication will be poor or lost. So great, yeah, great take, Amy. Love that, thank you, Amy. Love that, love you. Love, love, love. Next piece here, um, so let's just grab some ideas around this. Connection before content. What are some connection ideas you guys have? I'm gonna share a few of my own, but please use this time right now to put some things into the chat box so that we can all see some of your connection ideas. Here's one of mine. You can do a home tour. I would do that right now, but if y'all saw how much stuff I've got going on right here on my desk, it's better not. It's better not to move my computer around, but in your conversations with your employees especially, give them a home tour. Here's another idea, pet introductions. Yes, that's my cat, and I'm surprised and very grateful that she's not doing this right now. She literally jumps from the floor onto my shoulders, and I really don't have much of a choice. She does this, and then she just wants to lay there. Love this cat. So give pet introductions, and then share a meaningful object. Ask them, say, take 60 seconds. Go around your house and find an object that is meaningful to you. And by the way, have yours ready. And then give them a few minutes to be able to just say what, not a few minutes, even just 30 seconds. Why is this object so meaningful for me? I did this on a, um, on a Zoom session that somebody else was running. And I just ran over because it was close by. I have a little sign that my niece made for me that says thankful, grateful, um, 
it's not something like that. Thankful, grateful, blah, blah, blah. But the words are great, but the object, because it's my niece and I love her very much, so I was able to share a little bit about that. Any other ideas from the chat box here? Yeah, we got Jim Reese, uh, be interested, not interesting, be curious. Um, again, from Amy, we got listen first and validate the other's feelings and have fun with learning the technology together, you know, laugh together. Uh, and Jim, again, here's an idea, wear a funny hat. I need to get that hat, Jim. And, you know, Angie, um, I, don't, I don't know about you, but I'm the bearer of bad news. Not always good. I'm grieving. I'm thankful for my sounding boards and want to have the courage to connect before I deliver. It would be, as a leader, be easier to hide behind disconnection. Oh, um, amen yeah. to that. So good. So many good comments. Thank you guys for all of that. Wonderful ideas. So here's the next piece. So we have the, the, the first piece was connection before content, right? Now we have communicate with predictability. This is so, so, I can't pause long enough on this for emphasis. Harvard Business Review right now is putting out a lot of data on companies and teams that communicate with predictability versus those that do not. And I'll save you all the data and I'll say the ones who do communicate with predictability every day, every other day, every third day, every Monday, whatever it is, this is what we're gonna be talking about. We're gonna be getting live with one another, communicate with predictability. In fact, Harvard is saying at a minimum right now, communicate every other day at a minimum. And here's the thing, a lot of leaders are saying, that's too much, it takes too much of my time, it it's just too much. They don't need to know all this, I've heard a lot of different things. Actually, it's not, too, it's, we can, generally speaking, we can never over communicate. During this time, we really cannot over communicate. So communicate with predictability. A quick story around this. Uh, Rich Sheridan is a CEO and co-founder of Menlo Innovations in Ann Arbor, Michigan, a celebrated company. It's won many, many awards for its culture. I got on a Zoom uh, call with him just earlier this week, actually, and to ask him, you know, they, they work in pairs inside that company. Everybody always works with somebody and they're always in person. So two heads are better than none. It's a phenomenal company. Their strategies are very successful. Well, one of the things they do every single day at 10 a.m. is they have what they call the company stand-up, which all the team members generally are in a circle in the company headquarters, in a large circle, and they pass around an object while each pair gives kind of an update but also shares anything that's on their minds or on their hearts. Now they're doing all of that virtually, and at first it was really time-consuming, much took three times the amount of time. Now they're already back to this, um, their 17 or 18 minutes worth of time it takes. And people are still sharing their fears and concerns around things uh, having to do with their mortgages. Um, you know, this company actually, and uh, Menlo Innovations actually flattened their pay scale and made brought everybody to the exact same pay within the company until this thing is done because their company's at risk. So the most important thing in Rich's mind was to get everybody safe. The second thing was to protect the company. And so all the people that were super high up in the company that are, and all the people that are perceivably like lower in the company, everybody's being paid the same amount. And so some people are really challenged with that. Like, how am I going to pay for my mortgage? They're offering ideas to one another. They're sharing resources. He uses that time. It's as important to use that the, the, the time together to do those sorts of things. So that is that piece. Now here's another one, and this is the final one that we'll go into for today. Cheer every day. Uh, and this can look, this is how it used to look, right? And this is how it looks right now. It used to be that we'd do it in person, but right now we can do this on, on Zoom online. We can do this in a variety of ways. Uh, just the other day, I was doing a run around the Quarry Lake, which is not far from you. For those of you guys who live in Baltimore, you might know where that is. And I got to tell you, like, first of all, I'm not a runner. Uh, I am right now. I did run a marathon a couple of years ago, but uh, I've won and done. Don't ever need to do that again, but I'm running right now. So anytime I'm running or doing something athletic, I love to cheer other people on. I love to high five them. Clearly in this time, I'm not high fiving them. So I'm like thinking like, what can I do? What can I do to cheer other people on? So I just got this idea, you know, just, as they as we pass each other. Well, the, there was one guy I passed three times. He was running the opposite direction of me. And um, on the first time he was like, 
on the second time he saw me, he was like, yeah, right? And on the third time, it was like, yeah, again. It was really cool. Was after he was done, I was still running. He took his car and he drove right up next to me. He said, you made my day. So simple, but boy, did it matter a lot. Uh, just this morning, I did something that might be helpful to you guys. I took a picture of myself smiling and I put it out to a bunch of my clients, a bunch of my um, friends, family. I just put it out there and said, I hope you have a great day. I can't tell you what a difference that made for them. Just they, snap a picture of yourself smiling and share it with, share it with your world. Uh, one, other idea, one other thing around cheering. Uh, Rich Sheridan, the one I just mentioned, the, the uh, Menlo Innovations gentleman, they won a contract during this time. Most of the contracts are frozen. They build software, um, but they won a contract relatively small. He took a picture of a beer, a can of a beer, and he texted it out to his entire team, and everybody started circulating it. Just a simple way to still keep cheer in the business. Here's one other idea that I came across very recently. This is the chief technology officer at a um, at a technology-based company. I'll give you a second with that one. You continue to amaze and inspire me as, as you ad adapt and innovate new workflows. I'll let you finish reading the rest of that. To me, it was so inspiring to just take a moment and say what it is that people are doing really great in your company. Cheer for them right now is the time. The smallest little things, we always find what it is we're looking for. So look for it, see it. When you see something great, say something great. You guys have seen those billboards that say, see something great, say something great. They don't usually say great, but I always add in great. Um, so today and right now is the time to focus there. Um, and so just a recap on all these uh, intentionally building trust in a virtual environment. Check in with yourself every day. Have a sounding board. Please have a sounding board because you can't be a good sounding board if you don't have a good sounding board. Uh, connect, you know, connection before content. Communicate with predictability and then, of course, cheer every day. Now, I mentioned to you we're a little bit short on time. What do I got, about another five minutes? Roughly? Yep. Okay, great. Roughly five minutes. So, uh, go ahead. No, you're good. Good. Okay, great. So, I'm going to jump into here. Does anybody have any questions on this? Clay, is there anything in the chat box to be addressed? No questions, just some, you know, great input. Jim got a shout out from Henry. Um, you know, practice Keith, practice active listening with extra empathy. The energy flows both ways. So just great input from the crowd. Thanks, guys. Yeah, it's really good. Thank you, guys. Uh, by the way, real quickly on the listening piece, uh, a couple little strategies that I use that are really working well, really working well. So what I'm so you're going to they're going to talk and then you're going to say to them what I'm hearing you say is. And then just no parroting, just repeat back to them so that they know that you got it. See, not. 99% of the time people repeat themselves over and over and over again because they don't feel heard. So this process I want to share with you right now is to help them feel heard. And how you do that again is what I'm hearing you say is this. Did I get it? And then you're going to pause. Yeah, you got it. Great. Is there anything more? Well, actually, yes. And then there's this and my dog and my cat and my daughters. They can't stop fighting. It's So what I'm hearing you say is your daughters are just not, they're not doing well. That sucks. Did, did I get that? Is that right? Is there anything more that you want me to know? Just practice it. By the way, what, it make, what you're feeling right now makes sense. What makes sense about it is this is a freaking crazy time. It's another piece of it. What makes sense about what you're saying is this. So that you uh, empathize with them. So they feel heard and to know that the way they're feeling makes sense. We need to know that the way that we're feeling makes sense. So when your team comes to you and they're having a minute, what you're saying, what I'm hearing you say is this, did I get it, is there anything more? Well, it makes sense that you're feeling that way. It sucks and I, I get it, it makes sense. All right, let's move on to this next little piece here. So this is a, a, a higher level picture. We went zoomed right in from you to the world. Now we're gonna go just a little bit bigger in terms of building and maintaining trust in a, in a virtual environment. Number one, tell your stories. I, we talked a little bit about this. I shared with you many of my stories today. I encourage you to share your stories. 
the good ones as well as the ones that are painful and hard to share. The, the, the potential breast cancer one was so hard for me. So important to share your stories. People can connect there. Okay, so look into the camera. You might have noticed that I'm looking right into the camera. There's some research that shows that creates trust. And if you're looking down here, or if you have the computer up here and you're down here and it's like this, it, you lose trust. You really want to be right here. Also, using your hands on video, there's some research to show that the more you use hands, the stronger people feel connected to you. So there's a straighter, uh, stronger uh, sense of trust in what it is you have to say. Listen to other people's stories. We talked a little bit about that. Use names. Critical here. Critical. Using people's names. In your team, especially call out for people who use their names. In 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 a in a in-person environment, we wouldn't necessarily call out people's names. Use their names more. And in a business setting where you're talking about building business, uh, strengthening relationships with customers, use their names. Use their if you know their family's names, use those names. It'll build trust. Okay, be upfront and honest about what you know and what you don't know really really important there's not anything that you're supposed to know and just already have together so be clear about and upfront about what you know and what you don't know there's nothing that you're supposed to know and then just a few more continued here i we talked a little bit about starting meetings with the take five in with your customers and with your employees it's the whole idea is to leaning into connection before content all right so tout the competence of each team member this kind of goes to the cheering side of things, but if you can lean in and, and point out that people, they're because if we if we look at the truth, what are some of the questions that our employees are having right now? Some of them are, will I lose my job? Even if there's not, a, even if you've communicated to them a billion times, they're not going to lose their job. They need to know that inside. So when you're touting their competence, it's telling them you have value in this world. I see your value. This pandemic, by the way, will be done. It'll finish. We'll move on to the next phase of whatever is. And you've got the competence. You're going to be okay. So tout their competence. Deliver difficult news in an upfront manner. Some people are dealing with how do I fire somebody in a virtual environment? Really simple, very high level on this concept. Get right to the point. Um, this, a lot of people are doing the talk around the topic. The how's the weather? No, get right to the point. Okay, so I've heard, so send the agenda along with the purpose of the meeting ahead of time. So if you're going to meet with a, a potential, with a customer that you've been working with, that's another idea for you to do is to think about what is the agenda for this and certainly for your team. All right, and share and rotate power. So in non-virtual environment, command and control is absolutely not as effective, but you can still do it. In a virtual environment, you can't. Centralized power is much less effective. And so you really wanna go away from command and control and on to monitor and mentor. And so finally, here's a few resources for you guys. If you um, want, a, uh, I can happy to send you this resource page and just make sure that you have all the resources that are there. The Chapman and Company Leadership Institute is a, a phenomenal company that, um, does leadership training. I won't go into all the details of that. Instead, what I'll do is I'll say thank you so much for sharing some time with me today. It's a real gift to be with you. And I'm going to leave it open for some question and answer. And you guys can unmute yourselves so that we can um, we can do that. Yep. And I am hitting the unmute button myself. If you've muted yourself, you have to unmute yourself by clicking that little <laughs> mic button at the bottom there. So Joanna, what has been the, 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 the greatest challenge for you in this uh, environment? Working working at home sometimes, not all the time, but I'm a people person and I work collaboratively. So it's been a little challenging for me to do that. Um, I'm used if I do work at home on in the real in the pre-pandemic days, it was always, you know, nice to get out of the house after work or do happy hour or run some errands and not having that balance on certain days has been difficult. Gotcha. Gotcha. That makes a lot of sense. It's working from home is something else, isn't it? <laughs> yep. What about you, Chris? How are you doing, man? Sure, we're doing well. Um, this is, this is all brand new for us in the, in the roofing industry. Um, we're used to building those relationships face-to-face -face and earning the trust 
you know, through a handshake and showing people uh, exactly what they have going on. So we really had to just adapt to doing things virtually, um, creating better reports that that kind of paint a a picture that the client can understand and show exactly if the roof's leaking or broken shingles or like whatever it is to to try and and offer that solution without coming across as um, not in touch with the current reality. Like we don't we we understand roofs aren't the most important thing going now, but to some people they are. So it's one of those things that uh, we're trying to balance that while uh, not letting our sales you know drop too much. So. So how are you dealing with that? How are you? What are some of the steps that you're taking? Yeah, so um, we've invested in software uh, where we can virtually measure rooftops uh, aerially, um, so we don't ever have to go out to a property. Um, we've we kind of put the ball in the uh, owner's court and give we empower them by saying yes, we would like you to come out, or no, we don't want you to come out. Um, and then we typically do a follow-up phone call once the estimate uh, has been provided to them going line item by line item and explaining exactly what um you know installing three foot of ice and water shield means and what that, that looks like uh showing them what the flat the chimney flashing will look like once it's done you know just trying to to you know really bring it down to like a homeowner's level that may not have any idea of what what any roofing vocabulary means. Very very cool. I wonder what's one thing you took out of today's session that you're going to implement. Well, for me, I like um, I like the cheering piece. You know, I think um, this is the first time uh, that I've really been in a sales role in my whole entire career. So it is kind of like a it's always a push push push. And oftentimes, I think we get so wrapped up in that and hitting numbers that we forget to celebrate um, even the smallest successes uh, that we experience as a team. So I think I'm, that's that's my biggest takeaway to make sure I'm recognizing the guys um, that are, you know, they might they might get a, a two thousand dollar service job, and you know what, that two thousand dollar service job is going to keep a crew of four working for another day. So um, you know, it's not the biggest thing in the world, but you know, it's it's big to somebody. So I want to start recognizing uh, them for that. Can I give you another game to play? Sure. So on that same note, if you can, um, I don't know if your guys are, and gals are really into Starbucks or I'm interested to give you an idea and you can come up with how to how to use this in practice. During this time, say for the next, just for the fun of it, for the next three months, um, for every person who comes up with a creative way to cheer each other on inside the company, you will give them a $25 gift card to Starbucks. Great way to promote that cheering on of one another. Mm -hmm. yeah, good idea. Awesome. Thank you so much Thank for you. speaking up, Chris. Really great to hear from you. Amy, I'd love to hear from you. What did you get from today? How are you doing? What are you going to walk away with? Hi, Misty. Thanks so much for all of your thoughts. I really connected when you said, um, you know, let's name it and let's normalize it. That's huge um, because I am somebody that I guess you would say like I'm a natural cheerleader. Or I'm always trying to have a positive outlook. But with everything that's been going on, I think that I've kind of pushed that down. So actually, when you were um, talking about, you know, this is going to be post-corona or post-COVID-19 or whatever, you know, I did kind of tear up. I was like, there it is. You know, this is something that I haven't really addressed. I've just kind of kept moving forward, kept moving forward. So thank you for that. I appreciate that. Um, I have moved everyone to teletherapy. I do speech therapy for adults. So it has been <laughs> it has been quite the adjustment because I normally go into people's homes. And so just making sure that I'm comfortable with it, that I feel like I'm giving my best um, 
as well as making sure they feel comfortable on their end. So one thing I found that has been working is to offer the first 30 minutes complimentary free. Let's just get your microphone set up. Let's get your, your visibility set up. Let's make sure you know it's not intimidating. Let's have fun with this together. I'm learning too, you know, so that's been a big help. But it is, it's a lot of adjusting and transitioning and how flexible can you be? Um, so yeah, so that's what I'm dealing with right now. Uh, my biggest challenge is having Medicare cover this. Uh. So that, that has been um, a different challenge. A lot of advocating and petitioning to Congress. Wow, well, I so appreciate your willingness to share that, Amy. I think, you know, one of the things that you, you clearly, you clearly are doing some things to prepare yourself before you get on these calls. I think that is so powerful because uh, it was just last week that I was on a call with two different service providers, both whom I was paying, and one of them on a video literally did this, and I was like, no. dude. I need some energy, okay? Like, what are you doing, right? Give me some energy. Uh, and then I had another lady, I could just feel her angst. You know, here she's trying to provide a service to me, and I feel like I needed to support her, which is, of course, something I'm I'm happy to to be of service. But in when it comes to being paid to do something, we have to take, like you said, Amy, we have to take the time to take care of ourselves first, check in with ourselves, how are we doing? And I, you know, Angie taught me a great deal about that where just push the big old pause button if I'm not gonna go low and slow and really connect with people first. It's, I connect with myself first and then be able to connect with others. That's just such a phenomenal um, story that you shared, Amy, thank you. Thank you. So Quentin, are you, are you on, uh, did I say your name right, Quentin? I think some of the caller areas. Quentin, Quentin, yes. Can you guys Hi, hear me? We can hear you. Yep. How are you guys doing? We're doing great. We can't wait to hear what you're getting from this conversation. And we'll we'll just take this will be the last one and then we'll wrap up. Okay. Well, I definitely appreciate everyone for taking out your time today. Um and I won't hold you up because I know we've covered a lot. So I think one of the keys is that I got from it was to really take this time to take care of myself, you know, and I can't take care of my guys if I can't take care of myself. So I have to make sure I'm good so that I can be a leader and make, I have to make the right decisions as a leader because I, to be honest, I was, you know, I was feeling it financially, so I kind of wanted to keep working. And that wasn't the right call once I really thought about it um, as a whole. You know, like I would not want to endanger any of my guys and put them in bad situations. So I finally made that decision to um, just totally just shut down until we were capable of handling this crisis the proper way. So it was just making the right decision um, for my guys. So I, I, I appreciate this is not the first you know call I've gotten on today where um, you guys have just helped me in so many different ways. Um, it's, it's hard to really go into all the details, but um, just the inspiration from hearing everyone's story um, just helps me. So I appreciate everyone. Thanks for your time and look forward to getting on another call with you guys soon. It's a joy to hear your voice, Quentin. I'm so, I'm just a little bit sad because my, my computer froze and I'm like, damn it. Don't freeze on me when somebody's being vulnerable. <laughs> God. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Whatever you missed. Uh, but I get the essence of it, Quinn. I can feel your heart and I know it's challenging. Uh, I'm yeah. so grateful that you were here and that you shared. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I'll just say, you guys, Angie and Clay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This has been an absolute joy for me. Uh, mm -hmm. I love all of you guys. I really, this is my virtual hug to you. Can you feel that? That's, that's what's up. I've been practicing my virtual thank hug. Um, so there, right there it is. Amy, you're the bomb. Yeah. All right, you guys have a 
beautiful day. Enjoy this weather, and I will see you soon. If you need anything from me, Misty at MistyBurmeister.com. Be happy to hear from you. Until next we'll, time. We'll post everything. Uh, send out a follow-up uh, with your resources and how to contact you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Good job. You guys keep rocking it. Keep leading the way.